Hello and welcome. You're watching our special broadcast on the night where the battle of the states, the verdict is in and the big story is West Bengal where Mamta Banerjee almost single-handedly has taken on the BJP juggernaut and bested them. Let's just put those numbers up on the screen for you, take you through the big story of West Bengal where the Trinamool Congress has actually improved on its performance from 2016. It's actually at 213. That's up by two. The BJP put up a huge fight but ended up only at 78. The twist in the tale though that Mamta Banerjee may have lost her own seat of Nandi Gram but that might still be contested. We'll come to that in just a second. So the Trinamool Congress in West Bengal, Stalin in Tamil Nadu, Pinarai Vijayan retaining Kerala. Let's uh, go straight across to Derek O'Brien who joins me leader of the Trinamool Congress. Derek O'Brien, congratulations. Thank a you. battle hard fought and hard won. Uh, Derek O'Brien, would you say a kind of a battle, an election which you've perhaps never seen or fought in your life? Yes, I've been with the Trinamool Congress for 20 years. We've uh, fought many elections. Even in 2004, we won one seat. 2006, we lost badly. We've also, we were used to winning. But this is something, uh, because this is such a filthy campaign run by Amit Shah and Modi. And uh, I know everyone says, you know, you've won, you'll be humble. Yes, yes, we are all very sweet and very humble. But Amit Shah and Modi had a filthy campaign. The election commission was a disgrace to this country. Mm. Uh, and I think the bigger picture after winning big is that uh, all political parties must get together. We must have an umpire for a match. We had a captain. We had passion. We did great work. Mm. And uh, that's why we won. Uh, but, but in the future, if there's one big message... Uh, yes, and of course, today the chief minister uh, designate who will take her oath in a few days. Uh, most of her focus today on, was not on a victory speech. 80% of her victory message was on how we will handle COVID. Uh, I would appeal to channels like yours to put out a healthline numbers, please. Yes. Because that's our first priority. People are suffering. That's the most important number today, the helpline where you can reach uh, a, for a bed. Of course. For a, for a ventilator and that kind of thing. These numbers okay. are very important. The BJP were all bluster. Mm. They were all full SH1T. They ran a filthy, devious, divisive. Uh, as my as Mamtadi said, this is not just a, a win for Bengal. Right. This is a win for India. The, the, and the election commission, they were the most disgraceful. And I don't. I have full respect for the election commission. Don't get me wrong. We have full respect for the institution, the election commission. But it's the people who run that commission. They made the rules, they rewrote okay. the rules. But today, I don't want to go into the details of that. But I uh, think Derek, what you also, go ahead, go ahead. I, I just you know, want to ask, you. ask me, please ask me very quickly, Srinivasan, because I want to let you know that I'm on my way uh, along with two of my other colleagues. We are going to the election commission now as we speak. We're just drafting a letter. We're off to the election commission. We should be reaching there in the next 15, 20 minutes. Because, I, uh, yeah. I want to ask you about that. Is this about yeah, Nandi Ram? We are going, we are going, we are going. Is this uh, about Dandi Gram? Very fishy. I don't want to go into the details, uh, but, but there's obviously something very fishy when a party wins 200, uh, three fourth majority, almost three fourth majority. And then we always knew something was happening in a uh, fishy in Nandi Gram. But think about this. I mean, you know, in all this, we used to all know this uh, Mamuta Di as Didi. Then uh, about a year ago, she became Banglar May, you know, Bengal's daughter. Hmm. But I think. After she's led this team today, uh, Didi, yes, Banglar May, yes. But today, I think she's like a mother. Okay. Who's taking care of but all her children, not just the candidates, I know. but against this, uh, uh, for the whole state. She's been like a mother to this state. All right. I, I, I know you're in a hurry. That's why I'm trying to ask you, because what you're saying is significant. You're saying that even though it appears that officially Nandigraman is being declared for Suvendu Adhikari, not for Mamta Banerjee, you hmm. might be going to the election commission to challenge that. Is that right? Derek yes. O'Brien? Okay, you've actually left on air, possibly on the way to the election yeah, commission. Oh, there you are back. I thought you walked out of the interview. No, no. Are you... I, never walk out your, I never walk out of your program, yeah. Okay. We never do that to, to uh, the, one of the few Delhi Noida channels. I mean, All right. We don't uh, walk out. We don't walk out. We don't okay, go. okay. No, no, fair enough. So, I know, I was just trying to understand. So. From what I understand, you are going to the EC to contest the election outcome in Nandigram. Is that right? Yes, I'm going. I'm going. We're going in the next 15 minutes. 
Uh, let me tell you, uh, there is my colleague uh, Bobby Hakim, myself, uh, um, uh, Arup Bishash, mm -hmm. and Kalyan. Yeah, four of us are going. We're going to be like just checking the draft out now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I won't keep you, uh, Derek O'Brien. Srinivasan, and yes. I want to. I, I I must use this opportunity because yes. my my if, if if I may because yes. it's COVID and we we've, we've given out this message to all our party workers. My chief has given it out that no celebrations now. We can all have little mini parties at home, or you know, celebrate and never have a lot of uh, doi and mishti. But no celebrations, no big celebration. Also, we'll do that uh, later. We'll have a big parade because we need to win this battle against COVID. And right. the last message here, I want to say, this is the last time Modi is going to come here and and catcall women. The women of Bengal and the women of India are telling you, Mr. Modi, enough is enough. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. And the kind of the kind of divisive stuff which uh, uh, Amit Shah and Modi have come and done here, I have full respect for the Prime Minister and the Home Minister as the chair. They've 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 come here as lumpen. They've come here as thugs. They've come here as cheap shots. They've come here and done cat calls. And eventually, shh. The loudest voice is not of the spokesperson. The loudest voice is not a parliament. The okay. loudest voice is the voice of the people. Okay, we very wondered. strong, Mr. very strong Srinivas, language. Let me tell you. Okay. Let me tell you. You have not strong language. Mr. Srinivasan, Jain, give me a thirty seconds. Yes. We have not won this for Trinamool Congress. Mm. We have not won this for ourselves. Okay. This is a win for Bengal. It's a win for India. Right. Let us cherish that. Let us cherish that. And we, we want all the humility, as my parents almost told, uh, always uh, reminded me, mm. that the bigger the win, the more the humility. Yes. Humble in defeat, humble in de defeat, humble in victory. Right. Well, you're, but must you're also, COVID. but you must have the COVID. But, but you're but using strong language as well. I mean, you're saying humility, but you said that these these senior leaders have behaved like thugs. Um, they have behaved like you have to call them out, right? You want me to you 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 want me to listen? You don't know what we've been you don't know what we've been up against. You don't know to, today. I've used nothing. Okay. You don't know what we've been up against. Okay. We are still up against it now. In Nandigram also, we are up against it. Finally, okay. finally, a woman who's worked hard. Right. Who's worked hard, who didn't use agencies, who's come here and put you two arrogant, heartless men into place. Now go get India healthy okay. again. Put out, put out the oxygen. Right. Make sure the beds are in place. All and right. Enough is enough, Modi and Shah. Enough. Okay, okay. Very, very strong, passionate uh, tonight, Derek O'Brien. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. And uh, we'll let you go off uh, to the Election Commission. So, strong words there uh, from Derek O'Brien, Trinamool Congress. But that's the big news that we should flash. That's the big breaking news that the Trinamool Congress is now going with a delegation of leaders to the Election Commission to challenge the outcome in Nandigram, which was declared in favor of the BJP and against Mamta Banerjee. Okay, that's the big uh, news coming out of West Bengal. Let's go across now to another big newsmaker from another state where a remarkable victory has been pulled off. Uh, Thomas Isaac joins me. He's, uh, well, I don't know, is or was finance minister uh, of the Pinarayi Vijayan government. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, back again as finance minister, Mr. Isaac, but congratulations, Mr. Oh. Uh, was, <laughs> no, Rob, I am not contesting the election. <laughs> no, no, I know you are not contesting, but that doesn't preempt uh, the possibility of of, uh, <laughs> of finding a role for you. Uh, there, there are ways, but anyway, uh, congratulations because this whole idea that there must be a rotating of strike in, in Kerala, I think it's been broken after close to four decades. Um, what would you say... If you would, I know there could be multiple reasons, but if you were to identify one key reason why you've been voted back, and voted back, by the way, quite emphatically, what would that be? Um, one single reason is good governance. Mm -hmm. The kind of development initiatives that Kerala has seen during the last five years. The COVID time, uh, 
we were not stingy at all. We provided very substantial relief to the people. And at the same time, we didn't have to say, cut down on our capital expenditure because we mobilized uh, funds outside the budget mm -hmm. for special purpose vehicles for infrastructure spending. Mm. And um, the combination of the two, I think uh, was very much appreciated by the people. And the fact, by and large, uh, there's been no um, any major allegation of corruption against ministers and so on. Uh, the good governance definitely was the most important reason. Okay. So good governance, you say, um, Mr. Isaac, but uh, the fact that there were all these different allegations made about... Uh, you know, the gold smuggling scam and, and sort of even trying to draw the chief minister, his office into it? Now, it's true there was smuggling. Uh, and one of the players in the uh, smuggling case was uh, friendly with one of the key officers in the government. Mm. But other than that, there is nothing that links the government to smuggling here. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, Kerala accounts for only hardly about 15% uh, of smuggling into India. Right. And uh, this would be a, such a small uh, incident that would have happened. And there was nothing that links it to the government. And we were trying to explain that. Mm. But uh, the central government agencies were uh, more interested not in finding who sent the gold, and for whom it was uh, intended for, right. but trying to make some evidence to link the chief minister's office to this case. And people just didn't buy that. They didn't buy that. The government is much higher. In fact, I think that the, that the state government or the assembly or the state government was actually trying to get a judicial inquiry ordered against uh, central agencies. But um, Mr. Isaac, were you at all worried when the prime minister came, uh, you know, the BJP bringing all its big guns he was even trying to kind of target the chief minister, saying like, Judas, you sold the state for a few pieces of gold, all of that. Uh, did that at any point create any apprehension? Absolutely not. BJP is a small player in Kerala. Um, the, the, they peaked last election with 16% of the votes. But, you know, by and large, they can't get any allies in Kerala. Hmm. None of the mainstream parties would ever tie up BJP because of the strong uh, secular um, environment, the overall environment in the state. And therefore, there were not going to be any uh, serious In fact, uh, I saw your tweet because uh, the BJP just had one seat last time. I believe this is the Namam seat which falls in Trivandrum. And they've yeah. lost that as well to you, uh, to the well, CPM. And you said uh, they opened their account. And now closed you closed it. Is that, is right. that right? <laughs> and not only that, I have certain numbers are not fully available now, but their vote share would have declined by at least two or three percentage points. Hmm. That's a big decline. So that's a huge drop. Uh, in fact, uh, we were not worried about, we were only worried about BJP switching their votes to UDL. Right. Yeah, that, in fact, has been responsible for at least two key leaders lost, losing the election. Mm. And um, the reason why there was such a big drop in uh, BJP's share of the vote is because they experimented this in at least uh, um, uh, two dozen places. Right. Okay. Uh, but how would you evaluate what's happening with the Congress? Because... The Congress didn't do very well last time either. I think they barely won 22 seats, which is one of their worst performances. Again, this time, not being able to put up a, a serious fight, even though Rahul Gandhi himself fights from Wayanad. What do you think is going on there? Um, the real reason is uh, Congress took a total negative attitude towards the development efforts of the state. Mm. You can criticize the lapses and you can put forward alternatives, but to make fun of it in the way that uh, opposition leader has been going on day after day, 
um, people didn't like this too much right. negative. What is the positive agenda that you have? Um, so on the eve of the election, they managed to bring out not election, yeah, voting. About two weeks back, they were able to bring out a hodgepodge, uh, um, uh, say, right, uh, yeah, four promise list. But you know, um, on the whole, this negativism did not pay off well at all. Okay, I think that... this was the main reason. Right, that was that was one. I just want to ask you in conclusion, because uh, as someone who understands state finances well, uh, one of the things I noticed that seems to have helped state governments, chief ministers retain power, whether it was in, in, in Kerala, whether it was in West Bengal or even Assam, is building a kind of cash transfer state where you have a basket of welfare schemes, but cash transfers are increasingly becoming an integral part. And when I was in Kerala, uh, I saw a number of people talk about how you'd increase social pensions from, I think, 600 rupees to now it's, if I'm not mistaken, close to 1,600 rupees. Uh, the chief minister also spoke about it in his speech. Is that something which you think is becoming quite a important, I mean, apart from the benefits, the social benefits, politically, it's, yeah. it's, it's turning out to be quite an effective instrument? Uh, definitely, it is going to be having, um, uh, I think, the experience, I think no political party can now turn its back on a kind of support for the poor. Right. Now, Kerala, the situation is a little more complicated. Okay. You know, the, the Kerala has been growing um, at least 50% faster than uh, national average for the last uh, three decades. Right. And therefore, this has resulted in the emergence of a new middle class which constitutes, I think, something like 30%. Okay. And uh, rock bottom, there are 30% very poor people. So they have to now, be reached out left to. left base is mostly among these poor people. Right. At the same time, you have to take cognizance of this new middle class that has emerged. Okay. So, so that's a... the, the kind of income I mean, transfer, relief, and so on that, is... uh, that we're referring is to mostly to this bottom 30%. Okay, that's a very what important about, point. Now, what about this uh, next 30%, the middle class? That, uh, for them, uh, we have, um, uh, say, increased our investment in social infrastructure and physical infrastructure. Okay, and so that's how you're we, trying to... Yeah, so it's okay. a kind of uh, bridging, bridging the gap. classes, poor class and okay, the middle okay. class. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Isaac. Congratulations to you. Uh, for that victory. Okay, let's move now to another state and another big winner and this is Assam where the BJP has also defied the odds and come back to power and we have one of the architects of that victory with us, Himanta Biswa Sarma, uh, senior leader of uh, the BJP, key strategist. Thank you very much uh, Himanta Da uh, for joining us. Uh, congratulations to you. Uh, uh, Himanta Da, were you at any point ever worried when you saw that Thank the Congress so had put together a pretty effective coalition. Uh, they'd, they'd managed to get Hagrama Molihari of the BPF, your former ally. They had Badruddin Ajmal. Uh, they were, seemed to be running a fairly smart campaign, unusually for the Congress. Was there ever any apprehension? Uh, I think... Uh we uh, we always fail that uh, you can uh, cobble any coalition, mm. but with Badruddin Azmal in that coalition, it will never be successful. So we were pretty sure from the very first that because of Azmal presence in the electoral scenario along with Congress, uh, Assam votes will be polarized and it will have lot of polarization. Mm. And we are ready for that. And exactly that has happened. Okay. But when you say polarization, uh, Himantada, it's not necessarily as if the tie-up with Ajmal was the beginning of polarization. Uh, the BJP in Assam, much before these alliances were stitched up, including you, have, uh, have made very openly, some would say, divisive statements where you're clearly saying that you're acting in the interest of the Hindu majority, uh, you've described, you know, the, the refugees coming in from Bangladesh. The Hindu uh, refugees are the ones you want to protect. The Muslims are being called infiltrators. So were you not already guilty 
of of creating polarizations and and communalizing uh, the electorate basu uh, uh, no uh, no basu you know B, no basu you know bjp stand, stand having considered pakistan to the muslim majority uh, we do not want to consider muslim migrant from pakistan as a natural refugee so i think that is the bjp stand from very beginning and uh, that is not a communal uh, divide because we have already considered our land uh, for them to have their own country no no but uh, that is uh, <laughs> that that himanta da I, i don't even know if that's the bjp's official stand because that is an openly communal stand we are not a country we are not pakistan we're not a we're not a hindu pakistan we are governed no, by I, a secular I think, constitution i think, I think which I is think, uh, think, which is home to no, all think, religions think, and all faiths no no you no, can't say basu, that we are a hindu nation or a or a some other nation we are a secular no, basu, nation no basu the constit no no basu no 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 basu uh, basu this will be argued at length uh, in the supreme court but the primary basic fissure is that you are secular because you are not going to discriminate it among any caste and creed to your citizen but your secularism definition doesn't define that you will embrace muslim refugee or muslim economy migrant from another country i think all these are going to be debated in the uh, in okay. the supreme court and our views is very strong that we consider the people who are victim of the partition because hindus never wanted partition so we want them to give citizenship those who are victim of the partition so you have to clearly divide the, right. the well, line between the victim of the partition or the beneficiary of the partition okay i i'll i'll not get into this debate with you today uh, because today is the day when you won and uh, it's a big victory uh, but i i do want right. to ask you though that you uh, you know were not going to contest originally and then you jumped into the fray and obviously now that is the open question that having won is it clear that mr sonowal is coming back as chief minister yes. or could it be you ah uh, a uh, home minister amit sah has given uh, uh, various interviews to the national channel mm -hmm. and he has indicated that the chief ministerial candidate will be picked up post election by the parliamentary board okay i think uh, we are waiting for their decision people have just own they will be in guwahati by tomorrow right. and whatever parliamentary party will be, will take a call mm -hmm. we will follow that so it's not decided that it will be uh, mr sonowal it's still open is that right uh, uh home minister amit sah has said uh, to a interview that mm. the uh, that a chief minister candidate will be selected mm. post election by the parliamentary board so that doesn't necessarily means that x will not be the candidate or x will be the candidate i right. think that is the call which will be taken now by the parliamentary board and uh, uh mr sharma because you know uh, health is something that is under your watch and uh, we've seen what's been happening with the corona virus the entire country including assam uh, you made that very controversial statement where you were unmasked and you said there's no corona in assam do you now first did you regret that statement and do you now take it back and acknowledge that it is a big problem in assam uh, i think i think i think i think i think again i found no uh, basu uh, that day when i gave that interview hmm. that day uh, covid count in assam was in probably in the double digit so uh, so on that day i have given that answer that was the position mm -hmm. but i have immediately add another line in the interview mm -hmm. that as and when covid come back we mm -hmm. have to we all have to wear masks again we have to uh, make uh, we have to maintain social distance so people are not talking about the second part of my answer they are only focusing no, on no. the <laughs> first part of the answer which was based on the factual situation 
No, no, but Himanta Dad, the reason why COVID will rise is precisely because if people don't follow protocols like wearing masks. So, it's not a question of, you know, uh, when it uh, flares no, up, you Basu, wear, you have to be, suppose Basu, take precautions. Uh, now, no, 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 Basu, Basu, no, 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 Basu, let it be a bit scientific. So, tomorrow in Delhi, the mm. COVID, count, COVID count comes down to 10. Will you not resume your normal economic life? Will you, will you still wear the masks which obstruct oxygen flow to your body? Today, what Israel and America is doing, they have, they have said that no, masks is no longer required because no, vaccination no. is completed. So, that's every not answer has to be given on a factual, factual situation. Yes, yes, but Himantada, with all respect. That day, Delhi, it was, are, Delhi, there was COVID. But no, no, they I have given that. But I'm saying we are nowhere near Israel or America. Our vaccination no. coverage is a fraction of our population. No. Basu, Basu, no, Basu, no, no, Basu, let us not debate on that primarily because okay. you have seen me wearing masks today. Right. Because that day, when I have given the interview, hmm. I have given that interview, nobody in Assam was wearing masks. Not even your own reporter. So that was the reality of that day, or of that day. But that's not a... <laughs> any, so anyway... If that's... you would have been in Assam, you would have also removed masks for a sense. No, 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 I, mean, I would I mean, not... That was, a, that was the I... order of that day. I on would that, not... On that particular context. Okay, okay. Anyway, I, you're right. Let's... We won't... Get into too much of a debate over it because, uh, again, uh, this is perhaps not yeah. the time. But you now do concede that it is but, serious but yes, because at the uh, moment, I, I agree with you. It's I about 2.5 lakh today, cases. Today, everybody. 3,400 every, daily cases. Today, everybody. And 1,330 deaths. No. So, it's bad. No, Srinivasa, uh, Basu, hmm. I, I am one with you that today COVID situation has deteriorated. We have to vaccinate our people. Till vaccination is complete, we have to wear masks. Right. We have to maintain social distance. We have to use hand sanitization. And I am out and out telling people in 24 hours. That is precisely my job. Okay. And I am doing that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you come to Assam and you see, you see right. what we are, we, are doing to, uh, we are doing in combating COVID situation. Okay. Let me just ask you before we wrap, because, uh, you know, you are uh, not just an Assam figure for the BJP. You have an important central role as well. Uh, West Bengal is your neighboring state. The fact that the BJP fought this huge campaign there under Narendra Modi's leadership, under Amit Shah's leadership and, and lost... Uh, do you believe, as, as we've been hearing, uh, you know, quite a few voices now come out and say this is a big setback to the BJP and particularly to the idea that Mr. Modi can just, on his uh, own, win me, elections? Uh, no, give me just two minutes that, first of all, we have able to establish firmly BJP in the soil of Bengal. Hmm. We could go from 3 to uh, near about 80. We could defeat an incumbent ship minister in her constituency. I think those are going to, those are the reflection of BJP, power of the BJP's Kariyakarta. Right. I think it is not a time that TMC should celebrate. I think it is a time for TMC to introspect. Okay. Why a sitting chief minister has lost? Today, if you ask me to contest from any seat in Assam, I am not going to lose. I am going to win by minimum 20,000 margin. <laughs> so this is a day okay. when TV studios should discuss about Mamta's defeat and rise of BJP from 3 to 80. My gosh. <laughs> that's always, as always provocative of you uh, to say that that's the, that's the yeah, point that of is, debate. That is why we... Not yes. the... Not the fact that the BJP threw everything uh, at, this, at this election and still lost. But anyway, uh, fair enough. You're entitled to your view. No, Thank you, you are, very much you indeed. Are, you are, you are, uh, no, Basu, you, you are, Basu, you are, Basu, just, just, just a small word. You are trying to punish a student hmm. who is regularly going to the school and trying to improve his own record. 
<laughs> but you are not trying to defame a student who has actually failed in the exam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that one, uh, the loss in Nandigra means that the entire exam has been failed. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, always a pleasure. Uh, big, big Himanta thing. Biswa. A sitting chief minister lost. It is a big thing. It is. It, it is, is a big, a, big thing. Well, they are, Thank you. It's, Thank it you. Is a, it's a big piece of news and they are contesting it. Thank you very much indeed, Himanta Biswa, for talking to us. Thanks very much indeed. Okay. Himanta Biswa there as uh, feisty as uh, checked. Okay, let's just uh, go across now. Uh, let's go back actually uh, to West Bengal. Uh, we have with us uh, Amit Mitra, who is a uh, finance minister under Mamta Banerjee. He's on the show with us. Uh, we also have Sagrika Ghosh and Chandra Bose of the BJP. But well, let me start with Mr. Amit Mitra. Uh, Mr. Mitra, thank you for joining us. Uh, congratulations to you. Uh, a, a big, a big win there. Uh, was yes. this, and I've been asking this of various Trinamool leaders as they come on, because you've now had some time in politics. Is this a kind of election that you've never seen before, never fought before? Yeah, I think the key point, Vasu, is that in 2015, this is this is not about battle for Bengal. This is a battle for the soul of India. Why am I saying that? Hmm. In 2015, the RSS General Secretary, who's now General Secretary, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bosa Bale, he said something very important. He said, we, the RSS, want uh, the BJP to win all the state elections because only then can significant social, political and cultural changes take place in the country. Right. And 2014 election, he says, victory should be the starting point of this long mission. Okay. So please understand, this statement is absolutely contradictory to the RSS's own constitution, section 4C, which says Sung is, a, is aloof from politics. I'm quoting from the constitution. Right. So there's been a tectonic shift in the Parivar where they have chosen two instruments, primarily Mr. Modi as an instrument, hmm. with whom they had fights in Gujarat throughout his period, to win every state. Now they've lost in Delhi, they've lost in Chhattisgarh, they've lost in Rajasthan, lost in Maharashtra, all that, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, doesn't matter. Hmm. Bengal became the defining moment. Why? Because they were crushing the essence, essence of Bengal and the soul of Bengal. Hmm. Now, Ramakrishna Paramahansa, they have said, Joto Poth, Toto Moth. That's what they were crushing. Hmm. Uh, they, were, they were essentially plurality of Hinduism, which is why it has survived for so long. Many streams of thought, including the Charbak materialism, hmm. all this. And you know about the Gauranga Mahaprabhu's arrival as a Bhakti movement from which Hare Krishna has emerged today. So, Bengal consisted of many types of thoughts. Now, also, in my own constituency, hmm. out of 20 Durga Pujas, 8 Durga Puja chairpersons are Muslims. And in the Eid Milap, out right. of 40 Eid Milaps I have visited, 15 were chaired by Hindus. So, that's the soul of Bengal. And Kaji Najrul Islam, many people do not know, was a... Was a founder of Shama Sangeet, which is songs to the ode of Ma Kali. And he was a he was a Namaz reading Muslim. So behind the battle of Bengal was the statement of the General Secretary of the RSS, every state has to be won. And only then, hmm. only then we can do the social cultural change that we would like to bring about. So Bengal okay. was the fake. Okay. But, but let me ask you this, because yes. uh, I, I guess you're reading this verdict as having thwarted that attempt or that project. But the fact is that the BJP has come up from 3 to 78. It's obviously not as good as their performance in the Lok Sabha, but still 3 to 78 is a huge jump. So would you at least concede that there is a, a, a chunk, a, a fairly substantial swath of the electorate that has subscribed to that uh, you know, that thought or that ideology or, or that I message. Think it, is, it is not so much just the ideology. Massive money power. 
You know that 94% of the bonds were taken by BJP. They spent 27,000 crores in 2019 elections. That was one. The second was every conceivable method with no concern for means. Mm. I mean, Amit Shah, as Home Minister of India, says, Didi ko ukhaar ke phenk denge. Mm. What, what is this language? Mm. So, what I am saying to you, and I heard you say in another show, uh, oh, Didi, oh, Didi. You know, it was not meant as a as a uh, endearing term. It was meant as a very sharp thing that you do not say about a woman. No, no. So that's, I, I said it in that who, context. I said it in the context of it being used to to mock and kind of, yeah, like exactly, exactly. Now, uh, what I want to answer to your question is: Yes, people. Some people have voted for them. That is democracy. But my own sense is they have not voted for them for the long-term ideological reason of undermining the plurality of India and the unity and diversity of India, they may have voted for them pecuniary reasons, which I said huge money has been spent here. Every chief minister of BJP, every member of parliament uh, were stationed. Two five-star hotels were taken mm. where people were staying. So the problem is if you create the division as your uh, agenda, some sure. people will find themselves benefiting from the division. Okay, but, but obviously, obviously the kind of developmental work that Mahatma Banerjee did, yeah. Kanyashri, hmm. you know, it has won the highest award in the United Nations. This the government a, of India has given us this is four a scheme. major awards. This is a scheme for those who don't know. This is, I, I, I believe it's a one-time cash payment of 25,000 rupees to young girls, young women to prevent them from early marriage. Is that right? It's not only early marriage. It is also what it, what it targets is lowering the dropout in colleges, in right. schools. And it right. is linked digitally from the schools. So there's no, it goes straight into their account. Bicycle program. Do you know it has now shown that it has significantly reduced the dropout rate? Right. Nobody knows, which I want to share with you, that Professor Ghatak from London School of Economics has done a work showing when Mamata Banerjee came to office, 20% of the people were below the poverty line. Today, today, 14%, 6% drop in poverty line in eight years is not a known in India. So even those who voted for BJP yes. benefited from the massive schemes. And we hope that seeing the trend of Bengal, hmm. they will reconsider their decision in the <laughs> well. future. Well, let me ask you this because you still sound very much like Finance Minister of uh, West Bengal. I, I know you didn't fight this time from your seat in Khadar. Um, yes. uh, perhaps uh, health reasons and so on, you know, yes. with COVID. But um, does that mean that you're sort of not going to be back in the thick of it? I mean, there are, you know, ways in which you could still uh, come back to I that am, position. I, I, or, I'm... Uh, Vasu, I am back in the thick of it. If you saw my tweets for the last few days, yes, for the last few months, if you have seen my article in a major newspaper, continuously emphasizing, right. on one hand, the uh, Mamata Banerjee has created history by the kind of development recognized by the government of India. No, no, no. I am asking. I am asking you not. I know you are yeah. in the thick of the political, but I am saying, uh, are you? Uh, are we not going to see you back in the government in some shape or form? I mean. You, you know, uh, I, I, you will see me with Mamata Banerjee, for which I resigned my position at Vicky, as you know. Yes. Ten years ago. Okay. Gave up my international and national networks. Why? Because okay. I felt this was a lady who had the guts, the capacity okay. to do this. So I'm going to be with her. Okay. And that okay. is why I'm here to speak to you. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Well, we wish you congratulations and uh, we wish you all the best in whatever role you carve for yourself. I mean, but, uh, thanks very much indeed uh, for coming on. Okay, let me, go, much, let me go to Chandra Bose and Sagrika. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Sagrika, I've been trying to, dying to go across to you, but we've just been getting uh, all these voices one after the other. Uh, Sagrika, so, I mean, it is, uh, it's been a, a very, very dramatic day back and forth, Sagrika, with this, you know, huge win by Mamta, uh, just focusing on West Bengal, and then this kind of late evening twist in Nandigram, which now it seems the Trinamool is contesting. What a day, Vasu. Uh, you know, uh, we started the day, uh, you and I talking in a one direction about Bengal. 
and now at the end of this day we're talking in a completely different direction about bengal i love that about election uh, analysis but you know what a day and what a victory i mean this is unprecedented you were there in bengal i saw the intense aggressive mobilization of the bjp against uh, mamta banerji i mean to pull off this kind of a win i mm. mean this landslide it's a two thirds majority um and she's done it in the face of enormous odds right. and you know the vote share of 48% vasu that's you know i was just looking that's the same vote percentage that rajiv gandhi got in 1984 after the assassination of indira gandhi that major election yes it's that kind of vote percentage so i mean she's just crafted really crafted history but uh, you know i think this is a big day for indian federalism right it's a big day for the federal polity and it's a big day for the regional satrap uh, right. you know uh, amit babu was talking to you earlier about bengali culture and bengali exceptionalism and i think the right. bengali nation is alive and well and clearly you know uh, the pollsters and us journalists who go with the delhi mindset and right. we're in the mahal of a sort of uh, dominant national party and we sure. think about the national party winning every election but actually the local realities and regional realities are so very important and local leaders and regional leaders must be seen in the context of regional politics no no that's so true so i think this is brought the opposition uh, roaring back into contention yeah. uh, regional leaders from mamta banerji to pinray vijayan to you know to, uh, uh, to uh, have have emerged yes. and uh, to stalin have emerged and shown that you know in fact this is the day of the regional satrap okay, the day the of the, day the, of the regional box. satrap uh, across the board but uh, also chandra bose dorab supariwal also joining us uh, uh, chandra bose uh, looking now back at this campaign uh would you say because i i remember we used to have talk about this on our programs that you did find some of the rhetoric by own party leadership distasteful perhaps certain aspects of the campaign uh were not above board would you say that those were mistakes some of the you know the terrible comments the mocking the didi or didi uh, even campaigning the prime minister himself corona roaring across the country he still there addressing huge crowds Well, first of all, I must uh, congratulate uh, Bhamata Banerji, the Trinamool Congress. Although Bhamata Banerji has lost in Nandigram, but uh, her party has a very impressive, uh, you know, uh, results that uh, we have seen today. And I must also state that hmm. uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party has also done exceedingly well. From just three seats in 2016. we have risen to about 80 seats in 2021 but yes we have fallen short of expectation we have fallen short of getting the magic figure to form the government i think we need to do retrospection right. where we went wrong because bengal culture is somewhat different as mm. uh, dr amit mitra has stated i uh, partially agree with him that uh, bengal is unique uh bengal is a inclusive society people of bengal they don't divide on religious lines and they feel that politicians should not bring religious symbols into uh, politics so i think uh, that message is very loud and clear you see mamata banerjee's uh, appeasement uh, of the minority community uh, cannot be countered by appeasement of the majority so we need to do inclusive politics to really counter her appeasement politics that she has practiced so i think we have learned a few lessons yes i fully agree that politicians and political leaders they set an example to the people they must exercise constraint while talking in public a uh, lot of speeches and lot of words have been used right. uh, which are certainly unparliamentary okay. well that's which, that's uh, quite, we must have we must quite, exercise okay. portion that's, in that's, the future right that's that's, that's uh, quite candid of you lines, uh, but, that's quite candid of you to to concede that but let me just come back to you yes let me just come back to you uh, we've got i'll just come back to you in just a second i just want to come back to you in just a second because we've got peach dambram uh, with us a former union finance minister senior congress leader thank you very much indeed uh, mr chidambaram uh, for signing in just wanted to ask you mr chidambaram because i know you'd want to weigh in on the kind of national impact of this election and particularly what it means uh, to the bjp and its leadership 
but just about the Congress. Uh, would this be overall a matter of concern for you that two key states, you couldn't rest Assam uh, from the BJP, you couldn't rest Kerala from the left, even though Rahul Gandhi is an MP from Kerala? Assam, we said we will try to regain power. In Assam, we never asserted that we will win. Because Assam, we were against a formidable BJP machine to which um, the person who went from our party um, added strength. Yes. So Assam, Amanda. I think they tried their best. They got a significant number of seats, close to 50, but they lost. I think uh, it's not a uh, humiliating loss. It's an honorable loss. Okay. What worries me is Kerala. Every other election, the LDF wins and every other election, the UDF wins. Uh, ordinarily, we should have won Kerala this time. We didn't win Kerala. And that's a matter which I think the Congress High Command would have to investigate hmm. and examine very carefully. I and also, Bengal, uh, virtually zero, Mr. Chidambara. Well, I have a very different view of uh, the Bengal strategy. Uh, it may not be proper for me to comment uh, to the media on that. Anyway, but do there was a strategy, it backfired completely. Okay, give us some sense of what you, th what you think might be a better, or what could have been a better route. You see, it was a fight between the BJP and the TMC in a highly polarized election. Hmm. My experience tells me that there is really no room for a third person. Take Tamil Nadu, it's a highly polarized fight between AI, DMK and DMK. The BJP had no business uh, uh, propping up the AI, DMK and trying to run the show. Hmm from behind the scenes. Hmm. In Bengal, the fight was clearly between the BJP and the TMC. And uh, yeah, well, according to me, uh, the Congress should have thought through it more carefully. But I won't say any more than that. Okay, well, uh, you've also, uh, well, you've already, yeah, you've given us a sense of, uh, you know, what, what you believe uh, was uh, possibly an error of judgment by the Congress. Uh, Dorab Supariwala is also uh, on the show. And uh, uh, Dorab, a uh, question for Mr. Chidambaram? Yeah, Mr. Chidambaram, two quick questions. One is in Assam, you probably had the best alliance you had for a long time. You had the AIDUF, which had not tied up with anybody since 2009, and you got the Bodos too with you. Yet, you could not make the break. On the other end, Tamil Nadu, while you won, you probably had the best scoring strike rate you've ever had. I mean, what did you do right in Tamil Nadu? Because you got a 70, I mean, you got 16 or 17 seats out of 25 that you contested, which is a phenomenal, probably the highest strike rate of any party. And in Assam, with a good coalition, how come it didn't work out? Can you explain both? Well, Tamil Nadu, you have explained it in your question. We had a good coalition, we had a strong party leading the coalition and uh, we accepted a number of seats that were manageable. We didn't ask for a too large a number of seats which we could not have managed. So we asked for a reasonable number of seats and um, we got most of the seats in areas where we are from, the southern districts and uh, uh, some part of the central districts. We didn't win in the western districts. We didn't win in the northern districts where we are weak. But fortunately, we took bulk of the seats in the southern districts and the central districts. And I was not surprised that we won. In fact, according to me, we should have won about 18 or 19 seats. Uh, but that's uh, a chance you always take in an election. In Assam, the strategy was right. In Assam, the strategy was right. Moment the BJP joined with the AGP, the AGP has actually betrayed the people of Assam. The AGP, which started as a very uh, provincial, very regional party, uh, 
reflecting the sentiments of the people of Assam has actually betrayed the people of Assam. Once the BJP joined with the AGP, our strategy was pretty clear. Right. We had to put all the non-BJP parties together. We did the right thing. And I think they fought a brave campaign. The fact that they fell short hmm. is a fact of life. There's nothing to be disgraced about it or humiliated about it. You don't, you don't Mr. Chidambaram, uh, uh, you know, before we wrap, you don't believe as, as someone who's uh, been quite candid about uh, almost an internal crisis within the Congress, that this is yet another alarm bell? that many of you have been raising, especially to do with a certain drift in the leadership? No, no, I don't think you can blame the leadership for a win or a loss in a state election. These are collective decisions taken by the leaders of Assam, the right. leaders of Bengal, the leaders of Kerala. Uh, yes, of course, the leadership is the one that takes the final decision. But uh, let me make it very clear to, to you that it is the inputs provided by the state leadership which ultimately leads to a decision. Okay. And I think in Tamil Nadu, we provided the right inputs this time. A small number of seats in areas where we are strong and then uh, go along with the DMK. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's see, uh, you know, how, how all of this plays out. But thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Chidamram. Thank you. For thank uh, you. joining us on NDTV. Okay. Uh, Let's go, uh, you know, going back and forth, let's go back to West Bengal. And uh, we will just uh, come to that in uh, just a second. Uh, but before that, uh, Dorab, very quickly, uh, this, this entire Nandigram has turned out to be quite a twist in the tale. Yes, it has. You know, I mean, she had a safe seat in Calcutta. She left it to find Mr. Adhikari, who would got a who's had a stranglehold over this area for a long time. Mm. It was a high-risk strategy. It didn't pay off. By the way, Mr. Bose referred to COVID. You know, if you look at the BJP, the gains of the TMC, it has gained twice as many seats in phases as phases one to four. When COVID started waging, I would say around the middle of April, Yeah. all the phases after that, they've lost around 34, 35 seats. At the beginning, the first phase, first four phases, they've lost 70 seats. Probably COVID did have something to do mm. with accelerating the loss. Possible. The loss was there anyway. Possible. I think Nandigram was a very, very high risk strategy. But, you know, Ms. Banerjee likes to play high risk games and normally she wins. So, you know. Yeah. You no, it, 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 it was a bold move. And, and she kind of hinted at that in her statement that she made when she came out. She said that sometimes you have to make sacrifices and uh, it's for the larger cause. And, and if you speak to the Trinamool, they were saying that it was something that if she hadn't done, it could have literally cost the election. But anyway, uh, Mowa Maitra is on of the Trinamool Congress. Uh, Mowa, congratulations. Uh, you know, big day, big win. Thank you. Uh, but I, and taking nothing away from the win, I do just want to get your quick take on Nandi Gram though. Was that something which, uh, obviously a huge risk that you took, but was that a sense that all of you had internally that it could actually end up like this? Uh, where she might end up? You know, a, a, uh, uh, Vasu, that's the a, that's a difference between Mamta Banerjee and all the other so-called leaders. If you remember, Prime Minister Modi, when he fought in 14, fought from both Ahmedabad and uh, Maranasi. Somebody else fought from both Vayanad and Amethi. Mamta Manaji doesn't work like that. She gives everything that she has and she fights with her back to the wall. So if we had 100 more chances, we'd do it exactly the same way. Mm. And she needed to show to the rank and file that <clears throat> this was a fight that was for India for the very spine of India, and mm. she fought like a tigress. Mm. And we have, she has won in 215, 16 seats, whatever the final count is. Mm. So, you know, we are going to this, uh, see, we are going to the, she's, this is only, I think, under 2,000 votes. So we're asking for a recount. Let's hope we get that. Mm. But be that as it may, I don't think it takes anything away from anything. We have won the highest ever majority for a, you know, a, a, a two-time incumbent government anyywhere. No, no, it's, so it's I think amazing. That's Mamta Banerjee. It's, it's amazing, and that's Mamta Banerjee. It, and we do this 100 times over. And was there any point, uh, Mawa, at all in the campaign where uh, you felt jittery or worried? 
No, uh, you know, we were uh, we, we were fighting on the ground and we didn't have time. I mean, I had friends calling me from Delhi all the time, people in Central Hall saying, oh, we've already won people. But I think people who were sitting in Delhi mm. and making these predictions and people who like us who were on the ground fighting with our head down, I think we were living in two different worlds, clearly. So for us, because we were fighting and we could feel the pulse, we knew that we were coming back. It was just a question of whether we were coming back with 100 and, uh, 80 or whether we are coming back uh, you know with more than 200 but coming back was ne was never up for grabs we knew we were coming back and uh, and i have to thank bengal because you know for all the talk i'm a bit emotional for all the talk about netaji and tagore and vivekanand today the normal bengali has shown the rest of india that we are the real sons of Netaji and, and daughters of uh, Vivekananda and everyone else, no matter how they try hard to be Tagore, is frankly all Asa Ram Bapu. And mm. I have to thank the Bengali voter for showing the rest of India what a spy, having a spine is all about. No, so I, it's I, not I, even our day. It's, I think, all of Bengal's day. And I hope the rest of India gets courage mm. that it is possible. If you wanted an opposition, you're looking at it. And uh, in the time forward, we hope this is the beginning. Like I told Akhilesh, that uh, we hope uh, onward to UP now. Right, I, I can I can tell you're emotional and understandably so. I yeah. also I also just wanted to ask you as we end about you know you were the the first and perhaps the only person to openly call out the prime minister for his uh, the manner in which he was heckling uh, yeah. Mamta Banerjee and I and I wonder now because I did attend rallies of his where it did get a, quite a cheer from the crowd, but I wonder in a wider sense whether that's something that also may have not worked in a in a wider sense. That whole yeah, Didi um, or Didi business. Yeah, clearly, because see, you can get a cheer from the crowd. I mean, just because a billion flies like it doesn't mean it's not fecal matter. So you can get the loudest cheers. And if you're playing to the gallery, especially to York, to the kind of crowd that the prime minister likes to cater to, then of course you'll get a cheer. But I'm a Bengali woman. I'm fighting on the ground. We have sort of middle class Bengali sensibilities. And I could tell you that everybody was cringing. And uh, I remember using the word catcall on your show and people, you know, saying, oh, wow, she's saying the prime minister's catcalling. But to every Bengali woman and lady on the ground, that's exactly what it sounded like. So I, I think that's made, that made the woman voter come out even more and say, if the prime minister could catcall our chief minister, mm. imagine if these boots actually come into Bengal, what they're going to do to us. Right. So I think this really got the woman vote out. Okay. Well, actually, women voters, we, we didn't uh, speak enough about that, but I'm, I'm sure yeah. they played a pretty crucial role. Uh, the Trinamool has been very good with giving women greater representation in, you know, in assembly and parliament and also schemes targeting women uh, mm -hmm. so so i'm sure that they've uh, that they also would have been a factor but uh, anyway mawa thanks so much for talking to us and thank you uh, very much congratulations once again thank you thank you thank you